What up, Hope Biscuits? It's your girl Skittin' back at it again. And I have to tell you how goddamn stupid my freaking maid of honor is. When we're when you're a girl, right, and you look mad cute, you're like, oh, I look cute. I hope people tell me I look cute. But like then like when dudes tell you you're cute, you're like, ew, don't talk to me. Like, I don't want you to talk to me, right? So anyway, uh, she didn't fucking knock on wood and some old ass nigga in a fucking taxi pulled over and was trying to talk to her and she gave this nigga her number. You ever have that friend and you're just like, God, everything about you is so perfect. If you would only just stop being an idiot and giving your number to people. No? Is that just a me problem? <laughs> Moving on. Moving on. Uh, we are here to watch... Y'all know, I can't say this name, Kurzgesagt, in a nutshell. And it's what's hiding at the most solitary place on earth, the deep sea. Whales. Probably gigantic fucking whales just waiting to fucking eat people. I decided to do watch this for Halloween because it's terrifying. <laughs> also interesting. So let's go ahead and get started. Sometimes the world feels, hmm, boring. We've visited all the remote islands, conquered the Arctic, and penetrated the deepest jungles. And melted all the freaking ice caps and destroyed the Amazon rainforest. Really, what else is there for us to do? But there is still one place to explore. It's a wet and deadly desert inhabited by mysterious creatures living in total darkness. The deep sea. Let's dive down. When we look at the sheer scale of the Earth's oceans, it's hard to believe that less than 2% of all biomass on Earth lives here. And of that small percentage, around 90% is located close to the surface in the first 200 meters. This is where we begin our journey. Here, light can still penetrate the water, which allows photosynthesis to occur. Phytoplankton, trillions and trillions of single-celled algae and bacteria make up the foundation of the ocean's ecosystem, and they're consumed by bigger plankton who are consumed by other species. The seafloor at this depth is akin to the at and is often covered with coral reefs, algae and ussy plants that are home to a plethora of sea animals. So far we've focused most of our Look at that cute little turtle! It's so cute. Our attention on this comparatively pleasant environment where we fish, swim. This nigga drew a goldine. Bitch, the fuck? And do science. So, let's dive deeper. Moving from familiar coastal waters into deeper, more remote waters, we eventually reach the edge of the continental shelf, where we're confronted with the continental slope, the long descent down to the deep sea. With every additional meter of water, light Mermaid. fades drastically, which means there are basically no more plants, and the seemingly steep continental slope begins to remind us of the surface of the moon. Looking out, we're faced by what seems to be endless open water. So you mean to say that the ocean moons us? Let's leave the slope behind us and enter what's known as the twilight zone, the portal to the deep sea. Ew. As we sink down further, the water pressure rises to deadly levels. The deepest scuba dive ever came in at 332 meters. At that depth, the pressure Damn. is like having 200 cars stacked on top of you. Yet we've only completed 3% of our journey. While this region seems pretty grim, many fish and other animals actually spend at least half their lives down here. During the day, it's a good place to rest and recover, hidden from predators in the vast, dark waters. At night, they can okay. travel more safely into shallower zones to feed in the food-rich surface waters. In this Makes transition sense. zone between twilight and darkness, light becomes a powerful tool. Over 90% of the species indigenous to this deep environment use bioluminescence chemicals to create light. 
They do so as camouflage nice. against the very faint sunlight to send signals to potential mates or to confuse and scare attackers. Or they use light to hunt. Another tool for survival oh. in the dark is teamwork. At around 700 meters, we encounter a colony of siphonophores. They can be up to 50 meters in length, but are only as wide as a broomstick. To attract prey, okay. the colony creates a tragically beautiful bright blue or red light and deploys a curtain of tentacles filled with toxic needles that kill anything that comes too Bing. close. But most species living down here have Yo, to rely what the on an fuck? unlikely resource, dope. marine snow. White fl Excuse stuff me? that constantly sinks from the surface to the bottom of the ocean. It consists of dead plant or animal parts, fecal matter, shells, sand, or dust. Even so it's like the dandruff of the ocean. Even though this doesn't sound very tasty, without this crucial resource, life in the deep sea would starve. It's in this area that the most fascinating battles between two unlikely enemies could happen. Sperm whales hunt and attack giant squid the size of a house. While the squid Giant squid the size of a house. Jesus. Jesus! You know what that means? That means whales are bigger than a house. I told y'all they were big. They fight back ferociously. They probably don't stand a chance, but they do leave permanent marks on their killer's skin. As we reach 1,000 meters, deeper than the tallest structure built by humans, we need to be careful. This okay. is the midnight zone, a place of utter darkness. A barely explored wet wasteland consisting of nothing but endless black open water. At these depths, it's harder for a human to take a swim he than to take hell. a walk in space. Finding food. He got, he got food down here to is death. really hard, so life had to adapt and become extremely energy efficient like the 30 centimeter long vampire squid that floats through the water without motion with long and slender catching arms extended. They're covered in tiny stiff hairs which brush food from the water. This saves a lot of energy nice. compared to actively catching food. For carnivorous fish, it's much harder to find food since living prey is quite rare down here. So the hunters have to get a perfect grip on their victim on first strike, otherwise it will escape into the dark. Many deep sea predators have several sets of long and deadly teeth. Like the viper fish, which uses its long fangs to trap even large prey and swallow it whole. Or the frilled shark with its impressive set of 300 teeth, which are curved backwards to hook their victims in their mouths. We sink further, below the 3,800 mark, as deep as the grave of the oh Titanic. Oh my god. We are now at abyssal depths. Here, life happens Jesus. in slow motion. Preserving every last bit of energy is crucial for survival. Everything down here hovers motionless, or swims in a slow, elegant fashion. The only time the animals living in this zone move fast is when they have to escape danger. <laughs> like Trying the not to get octopod, eaten, yo. Paddling with its ear-like fins, or the grenadier's fish with its so slow eel-like tail beats. At 4,000 meters, we finally reach ground again, the abyssal plain. Nice. It's covered okay. in gray mud and rocks, dusted with the remains of marine snow, which is consumed by animals like sea cucumbers, shrimp, sea urchins, and sea worms. In some regions okay. of the seafloor, small dark mineral deposits can be seen. These are manganese nodules. Deep sea corals and sponges use them to anchor themselves on the bottom of the sea. Though life is sparse on the deep sea floor, even down here there are oases. In the rift valleys, where tectonic plates are splitting apart, magma heats up seawater and creates dark jets of water and minerals as hot as 400 degrees Celsius that form elaborate chimneys oh, and shit. towers. Extremophile bacteria nice. okay. use the minerals to create organic substances that are the basis for unique ecosystems. As we descend further, nice. we reach the deepest point of the abyssal plain at 6,000 meters. 
For most of the seafloor, this, this is, is as deep so as it gets. Deep. But if we want to get to the deepest point of the oceans, we're actually only halfway there. Let's enter the Hadal Zone, oh the underworld of the God. sea. It consists of long, narrow trenches that only make up around 0.25% of the oceans and are among the most extreme environments on Earth. Only extremophiles exist down here, like the ethereal snailfish that holds the record for the deepest living fish ever seen at around 8,000 meters. We see spike- What the fuck, yo? Can you imagine how fucking cold it must be down there? Like, nigga, there's no light. There is nothing. That, oh God, that's so crazy. That's Kian trippy. Shark, that's tripping me up right now. By as we sink down to more than 10,000. Until we reach the final slope. A trench inside the larger Mariana Trench with gently sloping sides that inframe a valley about 1.6 kilometers wide. This is it. That's it? The deepest point, the Challenger Deep, 11,000 meters below the surface. The water pressure here is 1,086 bar. Taking a swim here is like having to balance 1,800 elephants on top of you. But even here, Jesus. life has found a way to thrive. Next to sea cucumbers, white and light pink amphipods wiggle their way through the water. Their size is astounding. While their shallow water cousins are merely a few centimeters long, the deep sea version can reach up to 30 centimeters. And Jesus. there are other things what? floating elegantly through the water. Plastic bags that were found by scientists in 2018. Fucking way. No fucking way. Are you fucking kidding me? Oh my god. Trash! There's literally in the deepest parts of the ocean, there is garbage. That's how fucking dirty we are as human beings. Oh my god, I'm so tired. Even the remotest place on earth is not safe from human Look, look at his sad face. Look at his sad eyeballs. We did that. Ugh. There's nothing left to do now, and our oxygen is running out, so we begin our ascent. That's fucking crazy. After hours of traveling through dark nothingness, we finally see a glimpse of light. We arrive back at a calm Ooh. surface. The Ooh, oceans are so deep. There is so much of them. We owe it to ourselves and to our descendants to preserve them as well as we can. There are still so Agreed. many wondrous things left to be discovered. Hopefully nothing that lives down there. Let's be real. Hopefully nothing that lives down in fucking Challenger deep water that is large. Small things are okay. Large things, not okay no large thing that was really fucking interesting and the end made me really sad it's just so fucking disappointing that like we've managed to pollute even like the deepest recesses of the earth that's fucking crazy like how do you clean that right like nobody's fucking sending a cleaning crew down there so that's just super unfortunate i feel like but we still have a chance to turn it all around i feel so make sure that if you have any reaction requests or suggestions that you leave them down in the comments below. Otherwise, peace out, hoviscuits. It's skin lit.